Filming complies with local government's COVID-19 health and safety requirements. Additionally, singers were tested for COVID-19 prior to participating in on-site filming projects where appropriate. Good evening. I'm Santita Jackson, and I'm here today with my brothers Jesse and Jonathan Jackson, representing our family foundation, the Jackson Legacy Foundation. We are proud to support the Chicago Children's Choir and its long-standing Black History Month program. I'm also a proud alumna of the Chicago Children's Choir. And you know, when I joined the choir, it felt like coming home. It's located in Hyde Park, one of the few integrated neighborhoods in an otherwise segregated city, Chicago. But this was a welcoming community. It was a melting pot. It is a melting pot of all colors, kinds, and creeds. At the Chicago Children's Choir, all music has equal value and has been given the utmost attention and care down through the years from European classical music to African-American religious hymns. And so, right now, we celebrate Black History Month, which exists because our history has been ignored and underappreciated and undervalued. But it is American history. It's my history, it's your history, it's our history. And so we at the Chicago Children's Choir have always celebrated the contributions of African-Americans. On both sides of the baton, we were able to see people of all colors connect and create. The opportunity to make music with people you may not otherwise meet is an opportunity to build peace and to share love. After all, you cannot fight and sing together at the same time. Black heroes, down to the river, deep in the roots, drenched in the soil is where you'll find the truth. Black history, black history, black history, black history, passed down by the elders, buried in the books, looked passed by the schools, but everywhere you look, black history, black history, black history, black history, ring shouts and spirituals, guided and consoled, black heroes, there's wade in the water, follow the drinking gourd, swing low sweet chariot, sung by Harriet, songs of the underground railroad, Harriet who? Harriet Tubman helped free black people, paving the way for all black heroes. Ragtime, fun and syncopated, the king of rags, Scott Jock, Scott Jock. Lift every voice and sing the black anthem, there would be no blues if it wasn't for blacks too. Bessie Smith, Muddy Waters, Ma Rainey, and Big Mama Thornton. The Roaring Twenties enriched with black excellence, I too am America. Langston Hughes wrote, Margaret Bonds put the poem to music notes. Florence Price composed many a night. The first black woman played by an orchestra, Chicago Symphony Orchestra. In fact, we got jazz, bebop, Duke Ellington, Satchmo, Mr. Louis Armstrong, the queen of scat, Ella Fitzgerald, Dizzy Gillespie, and Billy Holiday. Rock and roll can fill your soul. Chuck Berry, Little Richard, sing songs of freedom. We shall overcome, we shall not.
Welcome to Chicago Children's Choir's annual Black History Month program. This event would not be possible without the hard work and dedication of our students, families, and schools. We are deeply grateful for our community of supporters, and especially to the Jackson Legacy Foundation and Jamie and Brian Vandenberg for their generous support of our Black History Month program. Thank you for joining us. In 1926, the architect and father of black history, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, implemented Negro History Week, which gave us the blueprint for Black History Month decades later. Dr. Woodson imagined utilizing the appointed time to begin unearthing truths of the African-American experience that would inspire a new black consciousness and spur on educators towards teaching year-long African-American history and heritage to all children. This most unusual time has allowed Chicago Children's Choir to collectively take a deeper examination into the roots of the African sound and spirit in American music. In creating an extensive digital curriculum underscoring the influences of West African music traditions, we journeyed together in our study of the ancient African provenance, the ring shout, which was the seed of new forms like the extemporaneous spiritual, African American game songs, ragtime, blues, jazz, bebop, rock, soul, gospel, gospel, spoken word, hip hop, shall I go on? We received firsthand knowledge and insight through musical workshops with Gullah culture preservers Ranky Tanky and the incomparable Bobby McFerrin on spirituals. It is an undisputed truth that we as a nation have starved generations of learners from knowing America's most original forms of music sourced by enslaved Africans in America. So we must work through the shame of our dark past to gain back our truth. To continue with such exclusions is to delegitimize and decontextualize African-American music, to frame it as outside the purview of both general social history and the history of music. Our staff at Chicago Children's Choir knows that our singers and all students need this empowering history. So we continue in our commitment to preserve this bigger than America story through rigorous, unfiltered education so that our singers will do their part in preserving the African musical traditions in America that continue to aid us in persevering past racial injustice.
specifically talking about the islands from uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, down the coast um, to the top of Florida that has what we affectionately refer to as the Gullah Geechee Corridor and how on these islands many years ago, uh, former West African slaves lived. Many of their traditions and customs and things passed on uh, through the oral tradition mostly. Now what we do as Ranky Tanky is we interpret a lot of the songs and kids games uh, into a contemporary style. Uh, just, just having a bassist, a drummer, uh, or a set, you know, a drummer, an electric guitar, and a trumpet already gives it a, a whole level of being contemporary. Many, many, many years ago, they basically used their voices to sing, of course, their hands to clap, and their feet to stomp. And that was how music was made. Down in the brickyard, 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 Juba, 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 juba. Oh no, stop y'all. You can't just sing juba. You gotta do juba. Do juba? What do you mean? Juba is dancing and drumming from Africa. Sometimes it's the only way I can say how I feel without getting in trouble, especially if I don't like the way I'm being treated. When I do juba, I understand it, the ancestors understand it, and so do my loved ones. It's like a secret language that expresses feelings or plans, just like many spirituals. Thanks for the history lesson, but how do you do juba? Patience, grasshopper. Juba involves dancing and drumming. Our bodies become the drums. We clap, tap, and pat. Slave owners didn't like the African drums and destroyed them out of fear of Africans communicating. But they couldn't take the African rhythm in their hearts away. Better known as juba. Let's do juba then. Follow me. One, two, three, four. Juba, 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 Just as the birth of Chicago Children's Choir was a form of peaceful protest, an intentional coming together of youth from different backgrounds through the unifying power of music, so too were the sit-ins in which my father participated. Encouraged by the sit-in movement were other forms of nonviolent protest, such as wade-ins, in which demonstrators demanded equal access by stepping into whites-only waters. This occurred here in Chicago, on a south side beach not far from my home called Rainbow Beach. Chicago Children's Choir is creating a living history of these events through an original music piece, and I'm pleased that the organization continues to bring our history to a new generation.
Hey there, this is Jay Nicole Brooks, and I happen to be one of the writers of this fantastic new work, Rainbow Beach. And uh, well, one of my favorite things as a lifelong Chicagoan is learning about stories, good, bad, and ugly. And this is definitely one of them. So it is my great, great pleasure to say, please sit back, listen, and please open your hearts and mind to this wonderful piece. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. That's gonna trouble the water. Devil is a liar and he knows it well. Keep your eyes on freedom. Devil is a liar and he knows it well. Keep your eyes on freedom. So I will rise up with my sword and shield and my soul will be free. Devil is a liar. Take your faith in hold it long. Hello, I'm Wynton Marcellus, your Managing and Artistic Director of Jazz at Lincoln Center. To all of my beautiful young singers in the Chicago Children's Choir, congratulations for all your hard work, your artistry, and commitment to learning America's collective history through song. 
The best of our choral music traditions help us to understand and embrace fundamental values and practices of community and of democracy. For example, the relationship between a soloist and an ensemble shows us how to harmonize the individual with the collective. While just participating in rehearsals and performances give us respect for mutual collaboration. We also call it teamwork. Today, we desperately need the full depth of America's best music to inspire us to face adversity with optimism, with creativity, and with the power of knowledge. You know, this year has showcased incredible human resilience. It's shown us the transcendent power of perseverance. We've all found new ways to connect with each other and to make our voices heard. On behalf of parents, teachers, fans, and supporters, our interest and investment in you, youth of the Chicago Children's Choir, <laughs> has allowed us all to dream more boldly and to imagine a brighter future, and for that, we thank you. Please don't stop here. I want you to stay activated and follow your instincts. I hope you all remain committed to excellence, and I hope that you continue to pursue what you want to pursue with integrity. Please keep making music. And remember, make us feel where you're coming from. Thank you so much. For me, I, I believe that Selma was the highest point in the movement for me. Um, it was so orderly. It was so peaceful. It was like military discipline. It had precision. And people marched with a sense of dignity and pride. And somehow it was almost like a dream that we would make it to Montgomery. On the day we walked and came to the head of the hill, to the top of the hill, I didn't have any idea that we would be beaten. Oh, in the past, we had been arrested and taken to jail. Um, I was really shocked of what happened. You, you had the reporters there, um, print as well as the electronic people. And, and for something like that to happen, you know, daylight, by people watching, it just, I really thought that we would be arrested in jail. And I was prepared to go to jail. As police brutally beat peaceful protesters in Selma, Alabama in 1965, the country watched. The day later became known as Bloody Sunday, and every year those who were there take time to reflect. I thought um, the tear gas canisters were gunshots. Um, I thought they were killing the people down front because that's the first thing we heard. Joanne Bland was just 11 years old. She was one of nearly 600 protesters who were attempting to march for voting rights to the state capitol, but a line of policemen would not let them pass. There was nowhere to go um, except to try to dodge the, the, the billy club, so it was awful. It seemed like it lasted forever. Nearly 50 protesters were injured. One of those injured protesters was Congressman John Lewis of Georgia. But they kept the faith, they kept the eyes on the prize, and with their blood, they wrote a voting rights sign. Those who lived through the tragic event say it's important to continue to remind younger generations. 50 years ago, we didn't interfere with the floor traffic in Gummer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important to tell the story. Uh, but it's so important, I'm so gratified when I bring my colleagues. 
I have noticed that over the years, uh, people said that's so meaningful was that uh, I learned so much I didn't know. And you have other members, so I don't just need to be the witness or the one, but the other members now share the experiences with other members. Now, I, I feel that I uh, have uh, a responsibility uh, to help keep it alive for the other people. And I would tell the story, continue to tell it to the best of my ability. African-American building strength in the South is affecting the culture in a very positive way. In South Carolina, the 50 blacks, 50,000 blacks in the books in 1960, now a million. And these numbers are rising up in the South. So it will affect the South athletically, the big athletic teams in the South. The politics, uh, what's good to blacks is good to everybody. We want liberal wages. We want affordable health care. We want uh, Pell Grants for our children. We want education for all children. And so I'm excited about the, the, the new spirit of voting that's going to have such a profound impact upon the country. Attention high school seniors and college freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. If you are in need of financial assistance, Push for Excellence offers a variety of scholarships for which you may be eligible to apply. Whether it's the Jesse Jackson Fellows Toyota Scholarship, the Cirillo McSwing New York Life Scholarship, or the Oralee Sanders Scholarship, Push for Excellence strives to offer something for everyone. Here are just a few of our scholarship recipients. Hello everyone viewing. My name is Chidi O. Sakwe. Dominic Davis. Julian Jones. China Mazum. Miles Chairman. Jalen Clark. Marcus Anderson. Jaden Reed. It's Kari Young. It's Megan Chu and I'm a Cirillo McSween Scholar. I want to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Jesse Jackson for all his support of my college education. Thank you for all of Toyota for helping with Reverend Jackson with the scholarship as well. I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you to Reverend Jesse Jackson for helping to make the scholarship opportunity possible for me. As appreciative as I was before, I'm even more grateful now having received this scholarship. Not only has it helped me out financially with paying for tuition, but it has also awarded me the opportunity to learn more about the Rainbow Push Coalition and their different initiatives in the African American community. I'd like to say thank you to Reverend Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Push Coalition for all the generosity and support that they've shown me throughout my undergraduate career and for the opportunity to pursue higher education. For more information, please visit our website at www.pushexcel.org and click on the word scholarships. Thank you and keep hope alive. Push Excel's goal is to inspire students to strive for excellence in education in spite of personal, family, and community challenges that they might experience. How do we do this? By advocating for educational policies that guarantee equal funding for all students without regard to race or economic standing. By engaging parents, students, and teachers in pursuing high quality education and striving for educational excellence at every level. And by forging partnerships with community-based and public sector stakeholders in education. Now Push Excel is a national model program with the purpose of connecting principals, parents, popular personalities, and students in a bond and to support students at every level on the educational ladder. Now we want you to become a member of the Rainbow Push Coalition and Push Excel. Your annual membership can help us to change policies that impact students, colleges, and universities all around the country. So step up and sign up today. Membership is only $35, and if you're a student or a senior, $15. Just go to our website, rainbowpush.org, and push join to become a member or push donate to support the Push Excel program. You can also text the word Push Excel, that's P U S H E X C E L, to 41444 on your cell phone, and you can give us any amount that you feel comfortable giving or call us at 773 256 2775. Wherever you are, you can support us as we keep pushing for you. And remember, to keep hope alive. It is tempting to believe that our problems are particular and that our situation is unprecedented. I've come to say to you this morning, we have been here before.
But our journey also teaches us that endurance is not enough. Listen, we do not sing, we shall endure. We sing, we shall overcome. This week, the world lost a tall tree and one of the greatest warriors of civil rights and justice. Vernon Jordan, renowned lawyer, business consultant, and trusted advisor to many presidents, was born in Atlanta. He attended DePaul University in Indiana, where he was the only black student in his class and one of five at the college. DePaul University expanded my mind and prepared me to serve. He became deeply involved in civil rights activism in the 1960s, challenging segregation and racially discriminatory policies. Came home out of some sense of mission, feeling that I'd come back south, I could do something about the problem. After graduating from the Howard University School of Law and successfully representing two black students in Holmes versus Danner, the landmark case that led to the desegregation of the University of Georgia in 1961. Following a federal court order directing the institution to admit the black students, Mr. Jordan personally escorted the plaintiffs, Charlene Hunter Galt and Hamilton Holmes on their first day, past a hostile mob of protesters at the school, protesting their admission. Vernon was very serious and very determined. He was focused on his mission. In 1964, he became director of the Voter Education Project of the Southern Regional Council. During his tenure, millions of new African Americans joined the voter rolls and hundreds of African Americans were elected in the South. Mr. Jordan became the executive director of the United Negro College Fund in 1970. During his tenure, Jordan helped the organization raise $10 million to provide support to students at historically black colleges and universities. In 1971, after the death of Whitney Young Jr., we of the Urban League movement, Jordan was named the fifth president and CEO of the National Urban League. Democracy, justice, and equality are not reserved for white folks only. His advocacy made him a target, and in 1980, he survived an assassination attempt by Joseph Paul Franklin in Fort Wayne, Indiana. As his civil rights colleague and then head of Operation Push, Reverend Jesse Jackson rushed to his side. It was later revealed that Mr. Franklin had actually trailed Reverend Jackson for weeks as well. President Jimmy Carter visited him in the hospital, and that story became the first for the new cable news network, CNN. Jordan also had an illustrious career in the corporate world, serving on the board of directors for several major American corporations, including American Express, Revlon, Bankers Trust, Celanese, and Xerox. I never saw him turn down an opportunity to try to help a young person who needed help, including to give good advice. We leave this tribute with his words and testament to his legacy. I believe that working with the Urban League, the NAACP, PUSH, and SCLC is the highest form of service that you can perform for black people," Jordan said in an interview in Ebony Magazine in December 1980. And if you serve black people, you serve the country as well. The next generation has to take the baton and, and keep going. And if we keep going, we're going to get where we should be. We remember and revere Vernon Jordan, the Rosa Parks of Wall Street. Hi, I'm Todd Yeary, senior pastor of the Douglas Memorial Community Church in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm here in the Clay Evans Chapel at the Rainbow Push headquarters in Chicago. Throughout our history, social justice movements have been birthed in the imaginations of people in places just like this, spaces where faith is expressed and service is inspired. People of faith, whether icons of scripture like Moses, Esther, and Jesus, or soldiers of the modern movement like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Clay Evans, Reverend Willie Barrow, or Reverend Jesse Jackson, committed themselves to doing justice work. Their efforts advance the work of faith and justice. Join Rainbow Push as we continue to do justice in the 21st century. Faith and justice still do go together. To join the movement, go to rainbowpush.org dial 773 freedom and remember keep hope alive my life is a gift but racism has shifted its joy equilibrium 
tilted off my square. Some people don't want me here. I have to persevere and preserve my ancestry. But I'm so tired and thirsty for equality, drinking from secretly segregated water fountains, wading in troubled water meant to drown me. Luckily, I can swim. But what about the rest of them? It's hard to freely float when shackles limit strokes. Trying to steal my vote, storm the Capitol with guns in 2021. All because democracy won? If those people looked like me, would have been a different story. A tragic reality, but par for the course of black life. Who will make it right? Can we finally just tell the truth? In classrooms, show the movie roots. Transatlantic slave trade, Tulsa, Rosewood, Henrietta Lacks, Chairman Fred Hampton, all heinous acts and all facts. If little women and anything by Mark Twain is required, then Langston Hughes and Zara Neale Hurston should equally be allowed to inspire. Music from the African diaspora should be held in the same esteem as their white counterparts who stole their dreams. Watch all 14 episodes of Eyes on the Prize and free yourself of the lies because without allies, black people will continue to die right before our eyes. Much courage is needed for the enemies of black people to be defeated. Apathy, inequity, racism, injustice must cease. We have to get along. Seek peace through policy and song. Stand strong even if it's alone, for what's right. Embrace the human in us all at first sight. Matters not what our skin colors look like. Let's fight to end racial prejudice together. If not now, then when?
We know that music indeed touches the soul. Plato said that music and rhythm find their way into the secret parts of the soul. Miss Mahalia Jackson said that music, her aim in music was to bring all of God's children together. Chicago Children's Choir has done an outstanding job across the city and has indeed touched the nation and has moved around the world. We know that there is life in music. There is love in music. There is hope in music. This is a healing force and I wish them continued success. I'm honored to be a part and we wish you Godspeed. Oh, oh, oh. 
My name is Coda Lewis. I'm 17 years old, and this is my 10th and final year in the Chicago Children's Choir. This is also my last Black History Month, so I want to thank you all so much for joining us here today. I hope you enjoyed the program and continue to be safe and be kind to one another. For 2021, we're excited to get more people engaged and involved in Rainbow Push, supporting the programs of Push for Excellence and the Citizenship Education Fund. Now, if you're interested in public policy and you want to help change the policies that impact those who are incarcerated, you can do so. If you're interested in impacting public policies that benefit education and businesses with social economic solutions, you can do that as well. You can become a policymaker by becoming a member of Rainbow Push right now. Now, if you believe in the scholarships that we've given to thousands of students each year, you can help us out. We've awarded more than $10 million in scholarships year to date. Now, you can help young people achieve a higher education by becoming a member of Rainbow Push right now for the annual fee of only $35. And if you're a student or a senior, it's only $15. You can help us make a difference in the lives of millions. Now, if you watch us every week, or if you listen to us on the radio, or if you're viewing on social media, we need you to become a member. And how do you become a member? It's simple. Visit us at rainbowpush.org and press join. Maybe you'd like to support the work of PUSH. If so, it's really simple. You can do so by texting the word PUSH, that's P-U-S-H, to 41444 on your cell phone, and you can give any amount that you feel comfortable giving, or you can call us at 773-256-2775 or go to rainbowpush.org and PUSH donate. So whenever you want to support, you can do it from anywhere. So keep pushing because we're going to keep pushing for you and keep hope alive. Dr. Kim, I went to jail with a group of seven students, July 17th, 1960, almost 60 years ago. We never stopped moving. I lost a few jail cells and death. We never stopped moving. I thought it was time to write some of the down so the only commission range can learn how we did what we did and how global it was, was speaking about Mandela in South Africa, uh, India, Qatar, uh, Gandhi in India, uh, here at home. This book tells the story, so please get it to give it to your friends. Read it, let's, let's argue about it, let's discuss it. Yep, so the book is Keeping Hope Alive, Sermons and Speeches of Reverend Jesse Jackson uh, Sr. It's, it's quite a good collection. You know, we've got sermons and speeches from around the globe because you have made such a global impact, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. Thank you for tuning in to our International Saturday Morning Broadcast. We need your support. Here are ways to give to Rainbow Push Coalition. Text PUSH, P-U-S-H, to 41444 to support the work of Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. and Rainbow Push Coalition. When you shop, Amazon gives. Visit Amazon Smile and select PUSH for Excellence as your charitable organization by starting your shopping at smile.amazon.com. Get involved with the movement. Join the movement. If you're not a member, become a member. I am somebody. Fighting the most important battles for freedom and justice for all. You made us change. Oh, to bring closer. Join Rainbow Push. But you're not pushing me away. Join! Join.